Welcome to Destinations Unveiled. I'm your host, Amanda, owner of Adventure More, a travel design agency specializing in custom adventure travel. Join me as we explore the world's most fascinating places, offering insights, inspirations, and travel advice from industry friends around the globe. On today's episode, we're joined by my friends, Seema and Rama, to talk about Tanzania. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Excellent. To get started, if each of you would mind telling a little bit about yourself and what drew you to being a part of the travel industry. I think you can start. Maybe Rama, Rama we'll start with you. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, uh, my name is Rama. Rama Masa. Uh, Rama is just uh, one of our Swahili names. It, it doesn't mean an Indian god because one of the gods in India is called Rama. I'm not one of them. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm I'm a driver, I'm a guide, and the, I've been working in the tourism industry, guiding clients from all over the world since 2006. Me and Tanzania journeys, Tanzania journey is like, it's like, it's like my, my parents, like my home, because this is the place where I can say, uh, I, 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 I spend most of my, most of the time, uh, my, my career time, and the uh, actually, we uh, I grew up uh, within Tanzania journeys, so I'm proud of Tanzania journeys. And they saw Tanzania journeys uh, uh, growing uh, from uh, something very small to something uh, uh, quite good size. They cannot say very big because the Tanzania the Tanzania journeys itself does not prefer something very too big because uh, actually they are more uh, service oriented company so they, are, they do not say I prefer something too big they want something they can control something they can uh well taken care and the uh represent as uh, uh very well so i've been working with Tanzania journeys uh, since 2006 uh mm -hmm. first i was working as a freelance been freelanced by, by Tanzania journeys but most of my safaris were under Tanzania journeys but apart from that i worked with a few companies uh for just some few safaris before I became seriously busy with Tanzania journeys. Uh, okay. And the, yes, uh, we have a, a long time experience and this uh, makes us, uh, I think, a perfect place for anybody who wants to visit Africa. Excellent. And what about you, Sima? So um, for me, I got involved, um, well, set up Tanzania journeys, um, with uh, my husband back in 2005, so for a long time. And as Rama said, started off very small, um, and over the years have grown. My was, uh, or is in, I should say was actually at, back then in community development. And so mm -hmm. it was like a perfect match to, and, 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 and I had a background in geography, so this was like a perfect match. And the idea was always to offer adventure travel and something a little bit more unique, mm -hmm. connecting with communities. Um, so offering something a little bit different than what many other companies were offering. Adventure, remoteness, uh, um, a true experience is all what we were about and still are about, actually. Um, and lots of good level service as well as... Um, yeah, a lot of customer care, yeah. And uh, we try to do that from the start. We've had points where we've grown, um, but what we've always had is, is like a good family feel, always what the fun was. So, yeah, it's good to be able to keep that all in. And that, those are some of the reasons I, I got involved. Yeah, um, excellent. In tourism. Yeah. And Rama, what makes Tanzania such a special destination to you? Oh, Tanzania? Yeah. Um, actually, I can say it is the authenticity. Actually, some people sometimes you can say, no, it is hard to get that thing called authenticity. But in comparison with any other place in the world, I can say Tanzania is the only place you can get that. You can get that. Yeah. And when we talk about Tanzania, we are talking about 100% natural occurring national parks and reserves. The beauty of the Tanzania is all naturally occurred because uh, uh, the Tanzania's uh, beauty, it's all about uh, um, the tectonic plates movement. It's all about the, uh, the East African Rift Valley. When I'm talking about the East African Rift Valley, I'm talking about a part of a great rift, which is stretching all the way from Jordan 
down to East Africa from the Red Sea. There is a point which we call it Triple Junction. At that spot, it is where the uh, Africa is separated from Asia. And at that point, it's where this Rift Valley is stretching down to East Africa. The effect caused by this uh, tectonic plate movement, it is, it is so amazing. I'm telling you, when you come to Tanzania, you may realize the formation or the path whereby the, the earth is still getting divided today as we are talking to you. And the, uh, along this Rift Valley, a lot of uh, uh, topographic features had been formed due to the pressure created inside. For example, when we talk about Serengeti National Park, when we talk about Ngorongoro Conservation Area Authorities, I think this is the only conservation in the world. When we talk about the Mount Kilimanjaro, when we talk about Lake Tanganyika, these are all making records. The Mount Kilimanjaro is the highest mountain in Africa, the first highest all over the world. The first, I mean the first freestanding in comparison with the highest, which is Mount Everest, which is found in the range of mountains. But the Mount Kilimanjaro stands on its own feet. But it is a volcanic mountain. This is the result of a tectonic plate movement. And, and so in general, we can say the highest point in Africa is found in Tanzania, which is on top of the Kilimanjaro, 5,895 meters above the sea level. But that's not the only thing we have. The deepest point in Africa is found in Tanzania because, because the deepest lake in Africa is Lake Tanganyika. Lake Tanganyika, it is the second deepest lake in the world. The, high, the deepest point is about 1.5 kilometers deep, which makes it very deep. So the highest in Tanzania, the deepest in, in Tanzania. But look at the Serengeti. You know, when you talk about the Serengeti ecosystem, this is something that everybody should come and see, with no doubt. Because the Serengeti ecosystem, we are talking about something massive, you know. And some people are getting confused. We have something called the Serengeti National Park, and we have the Serengeti ecosystem. Serengeti National Park is a national park, but Serengeti ecosystem comprises of Serengeti National Park, some game reserves around, which including the Ngorongoro Conservation. We have the Maswa Game Reserve. We have the Ikorongo Game Reserve. We have the Loliondo Game Reserve. And we have a small portion of Kenya called Masai Mara all together comprising in the perfection of the Serengeti ecosystem. All of these are important. And the Serengeti ecosystem, it's a beautiful ecosystem. The southern part of the Serengeti, it is short grass plain. But as you're moving toward the northern part, when you get to the central, it is start becoming woodland. As you're moving further to the north, it's all woodland. There is a reason behind that. Tectonic plate movement, it's all, it is the reason why the Serengeti ecosystem is so uh, well, uh, I can say, arranged. The southern part is highly affected by the volcanicities which happened at the Ngorongoro Highlands. All of the ashes, all of the ashes from the, uh, uh, the volcanic mountains which formed the, in the Ngorongoro Highlands were all deposited in the southern part of the Serengeti, which made it short grass plain because the ashes left behind a hard pan, a hard pan which do not allow plants which have long roots to survive. And after a long time of weathering, as you know, in geography, a shallow layer of soil was formed. So only grass can survive. But remember, all this is volcanic. So the type of grass found in the area, they are high in nutrients. This makes something else. This is the reason why we have the Serengeti migration, the great migration of wild beasts and zebras. Because the southern part of the Serengeti have got very uh, uh, I, I can say um, the, the, the grass are very uh, good for the uh, wild beasts and zebras, especially for the lactating mothers and the newborn babies. But this area have got no permanent water sources. So the animals are moving there when they are ready to deliver their babies. And this is happening around the, uh, late December, January, and in February, the delivering of the babies is on peak, which is, which is done in the southern part of the Serengeti. They're dropping their babies there, staying there for a couple of, of, of months because this is short grass plain. And when we talk about wild beasts and zebras, these are playing games. So they stay there for a couple of, of months, but after the end of the rain, they have to move because the area have got no permanent water sources. It is only suitable during the wet season because the, the, the soil is good. 
is, uh, because it is full of nutrients, but there is no uh, surface water which can support more than 2.5 million wild beasts, which cannot support more than 200 to uh, 200,000 zebras. So after the end of the rains, they have to start moving, searching for pastures, searching for waters. Then they have to move toward the north end. While they are moving toward the north end, some of them, they are going uh, mostly mostly in the western border and a few of them are ascending through the central and they all going to meet again close to the central, the area called Cerro Nera. And here they are staying for uh, another couple of months because the area have got water. But the amount of water found there, it's not uh, enough to feed or it's not, it's not enough to accommodate this more than 2.5 million wild beasts and more than 200,000 uh, zebras. Uh, so they stay there, they stay there only for a short time and then they keep on moving toward the north end and they end up in the Mara River, which is a big river. You know, that place, I can tell you, the wild beast and zebras, if they'll have another, op another option, they will, not, they will not have been there because they have to cross that river to get to the other side and that river is full of crocodiles. You know, some of them are drawn just themselves. Some of them are eaten by crocodiles, but they have to stay around there because they need water. And just after the end of the rain, they're all starting running down to the south. So this, this natural mechanism make them moving in a cycle every year, covering a distance of about 1,000 kilometers. So this is something that every human being have to see. I'm telling you, when we talk about the, uh, the Serengeti migration, it is not something that any media can show the reality. This reality show can be only seen by your physical eyes. Yeah, it's impressive. Um, I've <laughs> seen it myself and I would love to see it again. <laughs> is there a, I know the, the migration is always moving, but in general, visiting Tanzania, is there a better time of the year to visit or what's your favorite time of the year? That is the most difficult question that Everybody, <laughs> most of the people asking, I can tell you, come to Tanzania anytime you want, we know where to take you. Because Excellent. the animals are always there. You know, just depends on, yes, they are always there. Depends on the time of the year, depends on the weather, then we know where to, where to take you. Because some people love to see these animals while they are in the southern part, in the short grass, when they are having their babies. Mm -hmm. it's, all, it's all green, you know. But some people, they say, no, we want to see a lot of cats. If you want to see a lot of cats, then come at the end of the rain in the Cerro Nera area, stay there along the Cerro Nera River because animals have to be aggregated close to the river. And then you can see a big number of, of lions. But you may see a big number of lions, but seeing the highlights, it's the matter of being lucky. Amanda? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I would say that the great thing about Tanzania is that it is you know, the season is, is long. There is a very short period, uh, I would say, which is like during our heaviest rainy season, that maybe it's a little bit more difficult to come, though not totally impossible. Um, mm -hmm. The rest of the year, there's a lot to see. And of course, you'll see animals in different situations, but the season is long. So I wouldn't even say that there is a better time overall. Because every time you come, you're seeing, like what Rama says, you're seeing another spectacle happening in a different location. And normally we will adjust the itineraries. Once we know somebody's interested in coming in June, we can suggest what's a better place to go during that period. Or if it's December, we can say Northern Serenity. If it's like this kind of Christmas, uh, January period, then we'll say the Southern uh, Plains of Serengeti. So we would customize... Um, program based on when when people would be able to come yeah absolutely fantastic and do you have a favorite adventure activity are there a lot of myself uh, various either of you yeah um, um most for most me i no continue Rama. i say most of our programs are mixed programs in which Mm -hmm. Our clients have time to spend uh, time with animals, I mean, mm -hmm. in the national parks and the reserves, but it's also mixed with some cultural activities in which they get to mingle with the local people 
get to see the real life of the Tanzania, Tanzanian people, get to eat our meals, our local meals, the one we eat at home, see people in their real life, nothing arranged. They go to the uh, local settlements, see the schools of the people, see their hospitals, their markets, their bars and everything. But also in some of the programs, we have some, uh, some hikes. We have some hikes, we have some, some simple hikes, which means uh, like organic hikes, like uh, uh, nature, nature walk and, and see the waterfalls. And, and we have some kind of nature walk in which you go and see the local farms, but also on top of everything, we do Kilimanjaro. So for someone who yeah. need to be, uh, who, who need a, 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 a real adventure, then you can go all the way to the top of Kilimanjaro. But we have all levels in which depends on the client's uh, needs and recommendations. Fantastic. Do you have a favorite type of accommodation? Tented camps. I would say, yeah, tented camps. They okay. just give such a unique experience because you're that close to nature and yet slight, you know, protected as well. But, you know, mm -hmm. you sleeping in a tented camp and uh, hearing the animals in, you know, the whole of the, all the national parks uh, are unfenced. Um, so all the camps are unfenced. So animals passing through, I think people feel connected and very close to nature when they're able to have that experience, which is often very rare in other parts of the world, for sure. I prefer calling it sleeping outside inside. <laughs> <laughs> it does sound like you're outside um, with all the wildlife Hearing all the wildlife around you is is amazing. Yeah. And did you did you when you came to Tanzania did you experience that? Yes. Yeah. We we stayed in tented camps, so um, we could hear the lions roaring and the hippos um, coming out to to eat the grass and and everything else. So it was it was amazing. So yeah, I think they are, and they just can you know they're closest to experiencing the nature for sure. And on the, on the other hand, they have these, especially now there is a wide variety. You can get super luxury to, you know, mid range, but all of them are really, you know, well catering for comfort, comfortable accommodation. So um, I think they do a great job given the kind of limitations they have as a semi-permanent camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any other hidden gems that we haven't talked about yet um, that you can see and do in, in Tanzania? Yeah, actually, um, I was trying to explain about the uh, the Serengeti National Park, which yeah. because this is the most the, the most famous place I, I can say all over the world. But if you come to Tanzania, then we, we're gonna take you. We are going to take you in in in, in the places where will make you think twice about which place is on top of the rest. I'm telling you, because if you ask me which park is, 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 is the best in Tanzania, still it is a difficult question. The people who are not in Tanzania, the people who do not have this experience I have, they may just jump on Serengeti or on Gorongoro, but things are not the same for someone like me who been working in this area for so many years. I'm telling you, Every place have its own magic. Every place have its own magic. If I take you to the Tarangira National Park and see the baobab trees and see the groups of elephants, because Tarangira is the park which have the highest concentration of elephants families more than any other park in, our, in the northern part of our country, because we have the circuits. We have the northern circuits and we have the southern circuit. When we talk about the northern circuit, Tarangira is the best when it comes to elephants. And if you are lucky, if you are lucky enough to get to see when the elephants are doing something, we call it family reunion, then you may end up cry. Oh, I don't know. Because this is something which is happening like once or twice in a year. Remember, mm -hmm. elephants are living in matriarchal groups. The groups, uh, uh, the typical group is only about 10 elephants, plus or minus. And when a group becoming bigger, normally split into two and then keep on growing. But the splitting groups, normally they keep in contact in their home range. They are not territorial, but they, are, they have home range. The area where they are living around 
uh, which covering all the uh, grazing uh, or, or foraging areas. It's also covering all, all the, the areas where they're going to get water and having their babies year round. So this is their home bridge. So um, normally they keep in contact. And there is one, once in a year or twice in a year, or sometimes more, the whole groups which had been from the same origin, they come together in one area, say hi to each other, socializing, grazing, eating together for some times and later on, you see different groups like taking different directions and go. I have seen this with my own eyes. In the Tarangire, I have witnessed about 300 elephants in one area. You can imagine how big that group was and it was a yeah. breathtaking thing. You may end up crying. I'm telling you, this is something everyone, if you are lucky enough, you have to come and see it because this is something you cannot explain. There is no language which can explain this. But that part, uh, geographical wise, it is totally different with Serengeti, totally different with Ngorongoro. The landscape, it's amazing. As I said, every part has its own magic. The magic of the landscape in the Tarangire, it's something I cannot compare with anything else. And the, not only the elephants, there you can see giraffes, you can see buffaloes, you can see zebras, you can see wild beasts, you can see gazelles, Thompson grants, you can see dick dicks, you can see a lot of birds. For birders, that is the place to go. Tarangire have a lot of bird species you can find, but also reptiles. So these parts, um, oh my God, it is hard to tell which one can be on top of the rest. Otherwise, I just insist, you have to come and see. <laughs> Sure. I've got a few um, hidden gems. One is Lake Natron. I think that okay. that is often left out in people's um, itineraries, but there is something very geographically but culturally so unique about it. I think the two things connect so much that I don't think you can go to that place and not really kind of think about how you live your life because it is so re remote and le yet you see humans and nature functioning um, that it definitely makes you think a lot about who you are as a person, what you're about when you see how communities live there. So to me, that's a very unique place for people to go to um, and also, uh, you know, experience authentic culture. And by that, I mean that it's just a mixture of lifestyles of living that you couldn't even imagine in a way so i'd say that's one of my i would say gems um and another one is actually mkomazi national park which is kind of out of the kind of serengeti ngorongoro northern circuit that everyone knows um and what's really special about it is it's not that well i mean not no it doesn't have a lot of traffic on it not many people visit it but it has this very unique um rhino sanctuary where you get to see rhinos that are so rare in Tanzania in in in, in the sanctuary where um, you know they're well protected but you also understand and appreciate them as animals because you see them up so close and realize I mean it's just once you see that you really wonder why anyone would even consider poaching them yeah and equally in the same place they have a rehabilitation center for wild dogs who also are an endangered species. Um, so the fact that they're rehabilitating them there and look, you know, they find ways to get them back into the wild is also something very encouraging and inspirational yeah. to see. Yeah. So, I've seen wild dogs in Botswana. Are, oh. Sorry? I've seen wild dogs in Botswana, but not in Tanzania. Yeah. 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 There's okay. they, I, Yes, continue. Actually, talking about, talking about Lake Natron. Lake Natron, yes, apart from the people and animals, Lake Natron, it is something else. It is, I can say, it is another hotspot. Perfectly, yes. When you talk about Lake Natron, you're talking about the lake itself, which is a volcanic lake, because the lake is, 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 is a salt lake, and which is a home or it's a breeding point for all the flamingos in East Africa. So it is one of the best places to go and see flamingos. The lake have, it have a very high salinity. 
which protect the uh, uh, flamingos breeding areas and the and the and the and the protect protect meat from uh, predators. So they love that place, and it is it is the place where they normally go breeding every year. But around there, there is a mountain called Mountain Lengai. This mountain, because we are talking about the Rift Valley, Rift Valley area, the, because this lake is along the Rift Valley, and the, the, the lake itself and this mountain, I'm talking about the Mountain Lengai, which means mountain of God, because this is a Maasai language. A mount, mountain Lengai, or Oldoinyo in Maasai language, Oldoinyo Lengai means mountain of God. This mountain is a volcanic mountain, and this mountain is active volcanic. It erupt every after a few years, and the last eruption was 2009. Although there are, had, had been some minor earthquakes, some little a smoke had been seen on top recently, but the, 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 the active uh, uh, volcano was 2009. I'm telling you, this mountain, geologically, according to the geologist, this mountain has a unique type of volcano. Because talking about volcanicities, most of the lavas found from the volcanic mountains are full of silicate materials, silicate compounds. But talking about the mountain Lengai, these have a different type of compound, which is a complex compound, which is known as natrocarbonatite. The nature of this compound is enabling the eruption to be happening at a very low temperature, around 600 degrees, a little bit plus. And in that case, even the lava found from that mountain, it is mostly ashes, nothing molten. Mm -hmm. It is mostly ashes. And these ashes are very black and they're very perceptive to weather. If you get to see them, and when you hold them with your fingers and squeeze your hands like this, they may pass through your fingers without being noticed. And they are very black, the nature of this compound. And, it, and as I said, it is very black, but after the rain, the whole mountain is turning white because this, this uh, 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 comp uh, natural carbonate compound is then dissociating and forming some simple compounds. And most of these are salt, like sodium bicarbonate, which is washed down to the lake, you know, and make this, the, the lake so salty. And at the other side of the lake, you may find some people harvesting some soda for sale to different places. This is due to the nature of the compound which is found from this mountain. But it is also participating in the shape up of the southern part of the Serengeti because these ashes, due to the direction of the wind around the area, due to the location of the Indian Ocean, all of the wind around that area is crossing heading to the Serengeti. So when the mountain is blowing, the ashes are depositing again in the southern part of the Serengeti, talking about the Serengeti Southern Plain, the hard part and the nutrition left behind for their migration. Thank you. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, so interesting. I, I didn't realize that the um, planes continue to get um, nutrients continuing to, to re replant the grass and everything, I guess. Um, do you have any, um, is there anything that, viewers should know before visiting Tanzania? Excuse me? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Is, I... is there anything in particular that um, somebody should know before before they visit? Hmm. Not that I... I generally... Think... Go on, Sima. No, 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 I don't think I have anything specific that they should know about. I mean, unless yeah. it's related to um, their travel, the actual travel there. But in terms of maybe preparing for a trip, like in terms of, you know, what, what to have in a trip, I'm not so sure. Yeah, we maybe would them, so. we, I can advise on the weather side because uh, okay. people, the way they think about Africa, the people from Europe, they think about Africa as uh, a nice hot place, you know, just like that. But I'm telling you, 
coming to Tanzania, sometimes you may regret for the people who are going to the Ngorongoro Highlands and places like those. Sometimes it's getting really chilly. So uh, when you come to Tanzania, expect all kind of weather. This is all I can say. So be equipped with all weathers, clothes and other equipment like sunscreen lotions and yeah, sunglasses. Yes, and everything that you, someone may need. Yes, for all weathers. Yeah, that's great advice. Uh, layers are always good because um, yeah. mornings and, and evenings can get a little chilly sometimes too, especially in the highlands. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much for joining me today, um, both of you. This has been super informative. I have really appreciated everything. Yeah, Please thank you very again. much for having us here and uh, listening to us and hopefully... Yeah, there's interest for uh, people to travel here. Yeah, absolutely. If you'd like to learn more about traveling in Tanzania, you can visit us online at adventuremore.travel or email us at hello at adventuremore.travel.